Welcome to the latest installment of a series that we like to call That Leslie Sound. In this series, we're going to attempt to cover every Leslie pedal on the used in the new market. If you want to know more about what pedals are in the series, click on the card above to watch the series opener. And if you want to know what that Leslie sound is, click on the card that will take you to a YouTube playlist that you'll hear many famous songs that use that Leslie sound. Welcome to the series. <laughs> today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we have another installment of our series, That Leslie Sound. And the Beard is going to tell you what we are talking about today. So today we have, from Fender, the pinwheel. Sounds a little something like this. I think Mikey likes it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, that Leslie sound, we've been going through these Leslie pedals. One of the things, we thought we would start with playing on this one, uh, but we're going to get pretty much right into the sounds right here, right? Yeah. So, in the opening setting, I was playing this 1950s kind of reissue hot rod telly into the pinwheel, and we had the pinwheel running out in stereo to a PV Classic 30 and a Fender hot rod Deluxe. And then, interestingly, we also were using the sensitivity feature. So I will say this. If you go back and you listen to that and you have your headphones on, you'll pick it up on stereo for the rest of the video. We're just going to shoot it in mono because we kind of feel like most people are using it in mono. They're not carrying two amps around with them. So we wanted right. to give you the opportunity to hear stereo, but maybe more hear more what you, how you'd be using it, at least how we would be using it. So... Um, we had this sensitivity knob on, so there's an option on the back, there's a switch on the back to turn the sensitivity on, and when you turn the sensitivity on, it reacts to how you're playing. So if you look at that little thing I was playing again, you'll hear it switching between fast and slow kind of on its own, how, based on how hard I hit it. So if Pat hits it right now, just hit it kind of light. So we have a nice slow speed, but if you really kind of wax into it, We still have the slow speed because the pickups in the guitar he's using in the CR Al Slip guitar, uh, they're Lawler pickups, which sound great, but the, the output I don't think is right. as, high, as high as like the mini humbucker that we were using over here. So if we take the sensitivity knob and we just crank it up a little bit, try that experiment again. <laughs> So when we got up here, it's almost on all the time, right? Right, yeah. But that spot, like right a little bit over half of that guitar. And then we have this riff we're kind of using for all the Leslie episodes. If he plays through that riff once or twice, depending on how hard you hit it. Mm -hmm. 
It's almost like, I mean, that's probably a pretty good spot depending on what you're playing. Yeah, because you don't want it to trigger it all the time, right? Because you want that dynamic of what it's right. trying to do. So that probably to us is one of the most unique features of this pedal. And I think Fender knocked it out of the park with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not it. That's not it. So there's a whole bunch of other features. Uh, so real quick, just to run down, you have your fast and your slow speed. So you can set how fast the fast is and how fast the slow is. And then you have your fast and slow toggle button. And if I kick that button real quick, you'll see the light start blinking faster, indicating that we've gone to the fast speed. If I grab that button and hold it, that's the brake. And you'll see that actually go down to a stop. And then when you let go, it will ramp back up to where it was. You might have to hit it again to ramp back up to where it was. Yeah. So, um, initial thing. You have another speed right here called ramp. And so what the ramp does is that's how fast it ramps up to fast and how fast it ramps down to slow. Uh, so as you're toggling between the two. Sometimes you want it to go really quick. You want to go from a slow to a fast speed right away. Sometimes you want that feeling of motion. Especially at the end of a song, if you have it going fast and you want to see it just mm-hmm. slow down. Um, there's three knobs here. One's tone, one's level, one's gain. So, do you want to... I, I don't think we have to demo the fast and slow, slow knob so much, but probably the gain knob, because I think it actually sounds pretty good on this pedal. Remember, this is not like overdrive gain. This is modeled more after a Leslie speaker, which has like an interesting, some of them have like an interesting um, power amp section and stuff. So they're kind of trying to model that a little bit. So do you want to play that same riff or you want to play something? I might play something different. I don't know. We'll find right. Out. Just for we'll the game. We'll find out in a second. <laughs> All right. We'll leave it kind of at this fast. <laughs> So it does, I don't know, we're not peaking levels over there, but it does, it, it, it adds this like kind of grindy thing to it, not so, not like sustain y over right. driven grant game. Um, more like a boost. More like a boost. And of course, you have the level and you have the tone. And then the last thing we have is this three way toggle switch. And so, I'll be kind of careful and do this. If I go like this, We have an LED on and off, and that will turn the blue lights on the knobs on and off. It will not turn in the beacon that is the green light. We had two airplanes and a ship try to dock when we turned this pedal on. <laughs> um, a voicing, so if you're using it for keyboard. Yeah. Right in the mic. Right. <laughs> and then the dynamic switch, and I'm going to turn that off. And then there's another switch where you can set it for um, either a foot switch or an expression pedal. So you can use like an external foot switch, which I uh, I do that. I use one yeah. with the Hughes and Kettner, just a little switch that um, American Loopers made me that you can plug in and have the switch over here uh, with it with the Hughes and Kettner. Yeah, that's kind of necessary. Of our Ottoman board, <laughs> right? Not so maybe not as bad with this because you can get this. The footprint's much nicer oh, on yeah, this battle. Sure. Um. So real quick, why don't we go down through the three? We'll start on number one. And as you play, I'll switch from slow to fast, back to slow, go to number two, slow to fast, back to slow, go to number three. Number one is the Leslie 122, which is the Leslie that you, when you think of a Hammond B3 and a Leslie, that's probably the Leslie you're thinking of. That's the one that's kind of been famous and Hammond players want. The number two is the 145, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a little less bass response in that speaker. Uh, Fender says it's great for keyboards. And then the third one is modeled after the Fender Vibratone, which is the rebranded, Les- I, if my knowledge is correct, this is the, the rebranded um, Leslie 16 speaker. 
So let's run through this real quick. Mm -hmm. So I gotta say there, there's something too when we had it hooked up in stereo. That's yeah. like we've noticed a big difference mm -hmm. down here. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I really like the one twenty two, the top one, the best. I did too. Yeah. No, no, um, but I can hear a marked difference in every one, right? And I don't right. know since we're not keyboard players what the middle one would sound like, and maybe it's set up to handle the tonality of keys and the percussive attack of keys because uh, it's one I probably like the least. But of course, it came off the biggest, fattest one to that one, right. and then sort of kind of worked its way back up with the last one, which which is interesting because we were using that one in the beginning. Yeah. We used that one the whole way up through, but then when we flipped it up to the one forty five, I was like, oh, that's pretty nice. Um, or the one twenty two, we flipped it up to number one. The Leslie sixteen, the one on the bottom there, is more like um, I believe what Stevie Ray Vaughan used and mm -hmm. when he used his vibro tone cabinets yeah. and stuff to record like Cold Shot and things like that. It's a great sounding pedal, right? And those would probably find a different spot on a mix or maybe on a recording or if you paired it with other effects like a drive, maybe a drive, you might like one of those settings mm -hmm. better than the clean, which at the end will play out in an experiment probably a little bit with drive. Um, overall, great pedal, right? So, so when we're comparing its <laughs> own settings against itself, they're meant to sound like something different. Right. And everyone has their own taste and feel and... Uh, it's, and it's kind of crazy because we're getting to go through so many of these. Like we've been playing you know a lot of them mm -hmm. and we haven't even really kind of scratched the no, surface of what we have, we have. No. and right now like every, there's something i don't know this is kind of corny but i i feel like there's something i love about everyone on this one i, I gotta say highlights of this pedal for me is mm -hmm. the uh sensitivity thing yeah yes for sure and yeah absolutely and and thanks to fender i mean we were blown away right like you mm -hmm. went out and asked companies if they would participate and uh, they might not have been the first to answer, but they were the first to get it in the mail and get it to us. Like, yeah, it was the very first, first, first the pedal was from the Fender Music Corporation. I mean, come on. Like, mm -hmm. Great. Thanks to them. Because I've often said they're Fender, so they don't have to do that. They and don't. then I could say they're Fender, and they can do that. So they, they opted on the, well, we can do that. Right. So, so very cool. We were very appreciative of that. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, come on. Like, uh, props to Fender because... They're not a pedal company. Or they... They weren't. They were not a pedal company. They had some pedals, sure. but I mean... Several years that, ago, they started this launch of this pedal and this type of casing, different ones. And, and every one that seems... I got to hear them demoed at NAMM two years ago in the Fender booth, and they were robust pedals, even yeah. in that crazy, loud Nashville, you know, mm -hmm. situation. But um, And this is killer. Yeah. Yeah, so, and, and, and the jewel light means business, I'm just telling you. Like, I think it's either Iron Man or E.T. That When they turn this thing on, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you can turn these off and that stays on. <laughs> right. Well, and you know, this this is a candidate maybe for the little piece of uh, painter's tape, yeah. canvas tape that goes over the light on, in your pedal board, depending on how dark your stage is and stuff. But that, I mean, that comes in... Yeah. Bright is good. In a daylight show, you could see that. Right. So there's times when that really comes in handy. So with that, I think that kind of wraps up because we're trying to cover all the features, mm -hmm. cover some sounds, and and move on. Yep. And we probably spent longer on this than we are <laughs> going to spend on most of it. But, you know, the pedal, there's a lot of features here. Mm -hmm. um, stereo in, stereo's out, stereo out. So you have the foot switch jack on the side, too. I think we hit every button. Mm -hmm. um, I think we hit every I button. Know. Right. So, lots more coming. A lot. Uh, 
This is number three. 20 more Leslie pedals to work our way through, um, depending on when this comes out. So with that, please subscribe if you want to see more on the Leslie on that Leslie Sound, that series. Uh, check out Facebook. Check out um, Instagram. We're posting stuff there all the time, too. And with that... I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard, reminding you no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. Thank you.